Troy here from King's Gallery. In this video, I will share with you 10 amazing benefits to why you want to have your own personal journal. That's next. All right, so the purpose of me creating these videos is to help people connect to God. It's the connection, see, it's this connection that people are missing. It's that connection, that tight connection. That's what we need. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. For by this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Okay, so to begin with, I have just got to say, I am so excited to share this video and the content in this video because it's the thing that I'm probably the most passionate about because it's the thing that has illuminated and lit up my relationship with God more than any single thing in the history of my personal life. And that is a journal, that is having a journal. And the 10 benefits, I get to share with you the 10 amazing benefits to why you want to get your own personal journal and what I would say is this if you already have a journal you're gonna to want to definitely write down each one of these benefits take notes that's the only homework I would say in this video but if you don't own a journal I would say stop the video go buy a journal <laughs> go buy a journal pick it out you know you can have different style journals and different things uh, but pick out a journal come back and watch the video or watch the video then come then go buy your journal come back watch the video again take notes and then we'll go from there but one thing that i would say what's foundational to journaling is this concept of grace giving yourself grace the journal is a place to grow in grace when you give yourself grace you're just trying to learn how to hear god's voice and so whether it's messy or you've got misspellings or you know if you saw how messy my journals were and just they're a mess <laughs> but i really feel like god was was saying to me early on to give myself grace in the process it's just a it's a communication device it's not about being perfect or articulating perfect and having your grammar be perfect it's just about being able to get out uh, communication and engage on paper so it's a very organic experience to be able to do this i give myself grace to make mistakes as i'm learning to hear god's voice as i'm learning something new and when i take that pressure off of like that condemning pressure that sometimes we can put on ourselves then you can actually think better <laughs> you can think better you can think clearer you can process better and you can really it, it's like this good soil and it encourages um, a positive place for flow for positive flow a positive flow of communication and intimacy so to begin with that grace soil is what i'm talking about and it's giving yourself grace to make mistakes and not be perfect and that that's a good thing that's a starting point that's just the starting point for doing your journaling but i want to start right in on the 10 amazing benefits to why you want to have your own personal journal so number one the journal is a place to get clarity it's a place to get clarity it's the place that i learned and this was like that discovery right where you know all of life and the talking heads and all the the different things that go on in your life having a journal is a way to put it on paper and be able to see it from a distance it's kind of like you can't see the forest when you're in the trees but when you get above the trees the journal kind of becomes that that thing where you can sort of get a view sort of an aerial view of all of the different elements of your life and the different things that are going on in your life number two your journal is a place to vent I had no idea how uh, therapeutic it is to be able to vent, get the toxic stuff out of your system. Um, I remember when I was first trying to journal and write things down, I remember how um, it was like, I mean, I'm, I'm just putting F-bombs on the pages. I'm just getting out all this stuff. I'm crying out to God, but it was like very organic, very real. 
And I, f- I found that God didn't leave me. <laughs> it's like, hey, you said the F word. <laughs> or you said, you said this, you know, bad word. It's like, it's not like I'm trying to encourage you to say bad words. I'm just saying that I feel like you can be real with God when you're going through pain, you're going through suffering, but God just wants you to stay there. And it's like in that engagement, then God will eventually bring around encouragement. He'll bring around comfort. And, um, and so being able to vent is so important and and it's like just getting the toxic stuff out if you don't do it that stuff kind of builds up inside you and can really lead to sort of explosive situations if you don't have a place to vent it's kind of the same reason why millions and millions and millions of dollars are spent on counselors every year because people they want to go to a place where they can vent and they'll pay somebody to listen to them vent but the journal is an amazing place because you can vent and it just gets all that stuff out and it's a very cleansing thing. You know, we've seen these people where they've got these automobiles that are jam full of like garbage and you, you literally, it's like you got a place to sit, to drive, and then the rest of the car is just full of toxic garbage. And it's like have that feeling that you get when you clean out your vehicle and you know, you clean it on the outside, you clean it on the inside, it's all vacuumed out and wiped down and clean. You know, that feeling of just being ah oh, cleansed and clean. I really feel like the journal becomes that place where you can just empty out all of those toxins out of your heart, out of your mind, and get them out on paper. And it's very therapeutic to vent in your journal. So your journal becomes a place to vent. And that is a huge benefit. So your journal is a place to engage. One of the most amazing benefits to the journal is this intimacy with God. When you realize that Jesus isn't just the written word that we see in scripture, he's the risen living word of God. That means that through the Holy Spirit and the reason why he gives the Holy Spirit is so that each one of us can have intimacy with the living God. That is so amazing. But what I found, and I didn't know that this even was uh, was a reality, was that God would meet me on the pages when nobody was around. You know, we send we tend to think of ourselves as not having value. Like nobody really cares about me. I feel like I am insignificant. Like the whole world passes me by. Like I have no value. And one of the most amazing things that I realized was that that the the presence of God really came down into my dark pit. And he went like this and he made me know his love. He made me know his voice. He made me know uh, to recognize his comforting presence, his encouragement, his his comfort, uh, the wisdom, the lighted wisdom in the life that we see in the presence of God, in his words. And it was in the journal that I discovered that. And really the journal became that place where I felt like God's hand was in my hand. You'll you'll hear me say this a lot because it really was this organic experience of engaging with the presence of God and engaging with the living God. And when we just go to church and we just sit in church and we just hear sermons, um, you can be completely detached, not know the voice of God, not recognize the presence of God, not learn to communicate with God. It's kind of like being married, but you never spend any intimate time going on walks and having these amazing intimate talks with your spouse. It's what kind of a marriage would that be, right? Well, many of us Christians, we're supposed to be the bride of Christ, but we've never been taught how to enter into that real intimacy. So it's like this distant, you know, fan relationship. What if you got married and you just were a fan of your spouse? And that was it. You just were a huge fan and it was just from a distance and just, oh man, you just would look at pictures of them and watch videos of them and you're just like a huge fan of them, but you never really held their hand. You never went for walks. You never entered into that engaging, you know, whether it's cooking together or you know all the different things that you do with your spouse. You know, it's like that for many Christians. Um, they sort of you know, God is detached and they go to worship and the closest they feel of God is like when they're in corporate worship and they feel the presence of God. And it's kind of like, I look at that as being like the outer courtyard in the, in the temple where you sort of are gleaning from the presence of God when there's corporate worship, but you haven't 
learned how to come into the the Holy of Holies. You haven't learned how to enter into the Holy of Holies. So I feel like the journal is one of the best vehicles if we want to go into the Holy of Holies and have that relationship with God. And your journal is a place to engage. So your journal is a place to see gold. What do I mean by that? Okay, this is probably one of the most nuanced, amazing little paradigm shifts that I got was that in life you think, you know, well, people would say, well, God told me this or God told me that. And I remember thinking to myself, how do you know it was God that told you that? You know, you think of all the voices in the world. It's like sand on a seashore. It just seems like, man, there's just so many opinions and talking heads and just it just seems like endless sand on a seashore and how you can identify God's voice from all of the other talking heads, it just seems like it it just seems like it's almost an impossible thing. But this was the way that God showed me and this is the way that God taught me was this concept of a gold pan and how you're panning for gold and how you're looking intently into the gold pan as you as the water is swishing around and you've got the sand in the pan and learning to recognize the those lighted flecks of gold. Now hopefully you can see this, right? This is that 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 concept of a gold pan. So over the the weeks and the months from the point when my friend told me to get a journal and I didn't want to do it, but I respected him and I was in so much pain that I'm like, okay, I'll I'll even buy a journal if that if that's going to help me. I would cry out to God on the pages. I would write, you know, my prayers very specific and it helped me to get clear like what is it that I really need help with? What is it that I really need wisdom on? And I could get really specific on the pages of my journal and then I would get into the Word of God and I would find scriptures. And it wasn't just any scripture. I was looking for scriptures that were really encouraging me because I was a man that was desperate. I was a man that was in a lot of pain and a lot of um, nightmarish um, circumstances that literally wanted me to just take my life. It was that bad. It was that dark and that difficult. So I was a man that was desperate for the air of encouragement, the air of life. So when I would come across scriptures that were breathing life into me, I would write those into my journal. And as I began to write those into my journal, what I found was as I began to write God's word, and then I would write the sand of my thoughts. And then over the weeks and the months, I realized as I read my own thoughts, this is like the sand of my thoughts. And then as I read God's word, this is like God's, it's like the gold of God's voice, right? And that's amazing, right? You're starting to like recognize like, hey, here's the sand of my thoughts. Here's the gold of God's voice. And then I would get like these little revelations, like these little short like proverbs and these wise sort of things that would be like lighted, but it would have that same life, that same gold quality to it as God's voice and God's word. But it wasn't scripture, but it was that same wisdom that was like becoming very apparent to me in what I call the gold pan, right? In the gold pan of my journal, in the gold pan of my journal. And so I began to write these things down and recognize in the gold pan of my journal, the sand of my thoughts, the gold of God's voice, the sand of my thoughts, the gold of God's voice. And I began to just train back and forth the sand of my thought the gold of god's voice then that would turn into flow which future videos i'll be talking about flow like how that turns into flow and how i get these words that sort of bubble up and then i share these things on facebook and that's all glory to god because i literally it's i'm just a i'm just a goofy guy and uh, it's just like in god's grace he's shown me how to hear his voice how to recognize his voice and this concept of a gold pan is really been one of the most amazing things and I share that with you because I really believe that's going to help you to identify God's voice over the you know the gold of God's voice over the sand of your own thoughts when you're crying out to God on the pages of your journal. Your journal is a heavenly boardroom. That concept of heavenly boardroom when you think about famous people, the uh, people that are brilliant. Uh, let's say it's Warren Buffett or let's say Tony Robbins or you're going to sit with Donald Trump for a half an hour. How, how, about, how much do you think you'd have to pay to sit with Elon Musk? You're going to sit with him for half an hour. How much would it cost for you to just get a half an hour of his time? Well, the most amazing thing, and these are just men, these are just men that, that have problems and issues themselves, 
but their wisdom, to be able to sit and gather their wisdom, how much more valuable that you can sit with the creator of the universe, the one that created butterflies and the eye and you know flowers and peacocks and all of these amazing things. He's the one that created it and he's the one that created you and he has wisdom, right? He has amazing wisdom and Jesus has torn the veil and made access that many people don't even they don't even take advantage of that or they don't know how to do it like me i didn't know how to do that but one thing that i realized was that the journal became a, a like a, a heavenly boardroom where i could come into the presence of god and i really began to recognize the presence of god meeting me there and so the, the, even though the world will make you feel so worthless jesus will make you feel priceless because that is really what he's done by tearing the veil open is he's opening up that intimacy but many of us that have sat in church week after week month after month and year after year have never been taught the most valuable lesson which is how to enter into the holy of holies how to engage with the living word of god and i'm telling you right now that your journal becomes a heavenly boardroom where the wisdom of God, the same wisdom that made King Solomon the wisest man on the face of the earth, right? That same wisdom is available to us. So when I am in the pages of my journal, I'm constantly asking God, please give me wisdom because he promises us that those that ask for wisdom, that he will give you over and above wisdom to those that ask. And so I know, I don't know about you, but I know that I need a lot of wisdom. I need a lot of clarity. I need a lot of understanding. Being able to partner with the Holy Spirit, but better yet, he has a plan and he carries the blueprints and he wants to share that with us, right? And so um, your journal is a heavenly boardroom and that is an amazing benefit. Another amazing benefit is the fact that your journal is a tabletop for the puzzle pieces of your life. That's a massive benefit when you think about all of the confusing things. One time God gave me a vision and the vision, I was over a big city and the city was all gray. It was very sad, and depressing. I could feel the depression and the sadness and like the hopelessness in the air. And as I looked closely, I could see all the people were gray and they were carrying around these like clear bags. And as I looked closer, it's like they were just walking around with these blank looks on their face. And they, there was, and, and I could just sense that like it was like tangible hopelessness. They're carrying around these clear bags and inside the clear bags were all these puzzle pieces. And it was like the puzzle pieces re represented their, their identity, but they were so confused that they just had no idea. And they were just going through life in this sort of mediocre zombie state. And they didn't know, it, you know, they didn't know who they were. They, they didn't have real hope. And so God showed me that the journal becomes like the tabletop for the puzzle pieces of your life. I know in our family, we have these times where we have the children. I share custody with my three children or we're on vacation, you know, we'll get out a puzzle and we'll get all the tiny pieces out. And it's, it's a time where we bond and we talk and we laugh and we joke around while we're finding pieces and you're working on like a little section and it's so exciting when you find a piece and it comes together and you've got this little piece that goes here and you're starting to see the color of it. You're starting to see the image of it. It's starting to get you excited because you're, you're starting to grasp more of it. When God gives you flash visions of your identity, but then, which is amazing, he gives you flash visions of your identity, but then when he sits at the table with you, Jesus sits at the table with you and he helps you put the pieces together. And he helps to highlight, okay, yeah, that one doesn't go there, but that one goes there. And you put it together and you're like, wow, that fits. You can feel the life inside you happening. You can feel that meaningful connection with the Holy Spirit as you're looking at the puzzle pieces of your life that seem so confusing to begin with, but then as you start to move through it, you start to see those that, that puzzle of your life that seems so confusing come together. You can see all the amazing colors that are making sense and all those different little sections and different nuances of your life. And really the journal is an amazing benefit of the journal is that the journal becomes a tabletop for the puzzle pieces of your life where you sit with Jesus and he helps you put those pieces together. 
So your journal is a place for inspired targets. Harvard conducted a study on goal setting which has since been quoted and referenced in countless articles and books. The study found that people who wrote down their goals were more likely to achieve them than those who didn't. This became known as the Harvard study on goals. Here's the gist of the study results. A 1953 graduating class of Harvard MBA students was asked about whether or not they had goals. The following were the responses. 3% said they had clear written goals. 13% said they had goals, but they just didn't have them written down. 84% said they did not have goals at all. 10 years later, it was discovered that the 13% who had non-written goals earned an average of twice as much as the 84% who did not have goals at all. But the 3% who had written goals outperformed everyone altogether by earning 10 times as much as all of the other 97 combined. When you think about the power of goals, the power of targets in your life, this has been one of the most amazing benefits of the journal is being able to have a place that you can brainstorm with the Holy Spirit. And, and, and in order for this to work, you have to really be asking God, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me guidance. Help me, Lord. Help me to see what you want me to see. Cause me to see, Lord. Give me wisdom. And, and then as you brainstorm with God different things that are highlighted, the Holy Spirit will highlight to you. And even if you wrote down, let's say, you know, 10 brainstorming ideas of something that you want to do or even a vacation that you want to take or a, a venture that you want to do or some ministry thing that you want to do. The Holy Spirit is able to then highlight to you like, wow, this will be lit up. There'll be one or two that are going to be really lit up. And the power of a target, this Harvard study is amazing. Just that alone is something to really, you know, it really validates the power of why it is that you want to write down goals but it's like god showed me if you have a target right many christians we just were aimless in the whole concept of aimless and really the whole concept of sin is missing the mark that's a that's an archery term for missing the mark and it, we so we, our life in general is really missing the mark when we're aimless it says that our, my people perish for a lack of vision or for a lack of knowledge and that knowledge of our identity and, and the targets for, for our life, you know, God holds those. And so unless we're pressing into God and asking him for those inspired targets, it's not just to have goals and just to have targets. It's to have inspired goals and inspired targets because the inspired part of the goals is that which is God-born. It's coming from God. It's coming from heaven. And it's made for you. Being able to have a target greatly increases our effectiveness. So to be able to have inspired targets, you have to weed out all of the other fragmenting distractions. And this is another lesson that God taught me that I think I'll go into a little bit deeper in another future video. But it's the concept of being able to weed out all those distractions so that you have your divine targets and then you just stay in the pocket and then you stay focused on those things. And if you continue to do that, boom, you're going to hit those targets. Oh, good. I can't maneuver. Stay on target. We're too close. Stay on target. And when I think about that Harvard study, it is an amazing thing. Those 3% that wrote their goals down. Well, you know what? You and I are going to have a huge benefit because we get, we're going to have journals, right? We're going to be writing this stuff in our journals. And that's one of the most amazing benefits to having your own personal journal. Your journal is a place to design and create. As a creative visionary, a sculptor, and just somebody that really I sense the pleasure of God. It's like in Chariots of Fire when the guy says, you know, God has made me fast, and when I run, I feel his pleasure. God has made me creative, and when I create, I feel the pleasure of God moving through me. So I get excited about dreams, visions, and content that I feel like that the church and the body of Christ really needs. And this concept of being able to have a place to bring all this beautiful, inspired stuff together 
engage with the presence of God, engage in intimacy with the living word, and have a place that I can also sketch, right? I want to sketch ideas. I want to sketch, even if it's like something that you want to design, you know, some little idea that you have of the way that you want to design a garden or you want to do something, right alongside all of these other scriptures and, you know, different things, you're crying out toxic prayers and all the different things that you're getting out of your system and all the amazing things that this journal becomes, right alongside of that, if you go through my journal, you're going to find sketches of, you know, sculpture ideas and sketches of different things in there where I designed something. I remember one year, the the Christian school that my children were going to, they, they, they basically hired me to design the school float. And so that was kind of cool because in my journal, it's funny, every time I come to that old journal when I'm just reading back on my old journals, I open it up and, I, and I've got this design of this float that I had to design for that. But right alongside that are scriptures and all these other things that go with it. So your journal, having being able to design and create is an amazing benefit all together with these other benefits. Your journal is a place to gather beauty. This is really one of the most like life-giving concepts. When I was going through this dark crushing time when it's like I was in I just had debt and divorce and death and darkness and all the D words. They were just on me and just crushing me. It's like I was so hopeless and I felt like God was just saying, "Look at this beautiful seed." Look at this tiny thing. Look at this beautiful thing here. Just shut out the rest of it. Just start to just put plant these little tiny beautiful things in your life. The journal is that place where the inspired scriptures. Uh, it's the inspired brainstorming. It's the inspired um, vision ideas that you have. It's the you know hey look I'm gonna write plans down and goals for the week that are exciting. I want to have some people over for dinner. I'm gonna light a candle and I'm gonna put on some music. I'm going to uh, you know, draw and, and do amazing things. All of the things that are of great value, of beautiful value. It's that, you know, Philippians 4, 8, you know, that says whatever is good and noble and beautiful and lovely to dwell on these things. But it's like we're going to go a step further. And we're going to actually write those things in our journal. So the journal becomes a gathering place for that which is beautiful, that which is inspired that which gives life that which is uh, it's like a garden it's like michelangelo when he's sculpting it says that he would look at a, at a at a rock and he would just remove anything that didn't belong until you would have this beautiful you know carved marble sculpture right this masterpiece and it's kind of like that when i sculpt in clay i have a vision in my mind that i just go after and i'm so focused on the finished vision the beautiful vision of it that I'm not thinking about, oh, there's a lump of ugly clay there or there's this or that. I'm just focused on the beautiful thing. So the journal is a gathering place for that which is beautiful. And when you realize that, you always want to go there, right? If you have a beautiful location that you can go to um, and, and, and the journal becomes that, becomes this beautiful place that you know that when you go there, there's going to be beautiful ideas, concepts, visions, uh, brainstorming things, all the things that are most valuable to you are going to be in your journal. So that's another amazing benefit why you want your own personal journal. Your journal is a visible root system. Your journal is a visible root system. What do I mean by visible root system? Really, I, I look at it more like this. It's a visual record of your sincere faith crying out for God, crying out for his presence, crying out for wisdom, and you have a written record, okay? How valuable is it that you're going to have a written record in your journal of, look, I am actually crying out to you, God, and when, it, when it's sincere and humble and you truly want to know God and you're truly writing those words, he pays attention to that. He's going to meet your sincere, humble heart. But being able to have that written record, what happens is that inside your journal, it becomes a visible root system. You know, like if you were to see a cross section of like some soil with the roots going down, the journal becomes like that. It's like all of your organic writings intertwining with 
the living word of God and the soil of God's presence, right? Because that is the soil that's going to bear 30, 60, and 100 fold is that intimacy. Remember that lesson? Remember that lesson when I when I talked about the, the root system and being able to have that visible root system of intimacy with God and the journal becomes that visible root system, that visible root system of you crying out to God and true love meeting you on the pages of your own personal journal. That's amazing. Okay, so I want to add one more bonus benefit. It's a bonus benefit when you realize that the journal, as you interact with God, the journal is a place to find your identity. God will speak to you about your identity. He holds the blueprint for your butterfly DNA. You think about how how amazing God is with creation and how think about a peacock and the peacock feather and every little design part of the peacock feather and you think about a butterfly and it you know being you know coming out of this cocoon and how amazing it is. Every single bit of that is designed and each after its own kind. And so when you're born of God's Spirit and you're born of the Holy Spirit and you're not just flesh, you're actually born of the Spirit of God. So this becomes our identity of what God says, this is who you are. So what he says in his scripture, what he says in his word, he begins to speak that to us. As we spend time with God's word, his identity, we become more and more Christ-like in our character, in our ways, and in our love for the world around us. We're gonna look like Jesus, right? Jesus is perfect theology. And our identity, even beyond that, is there's custom plans. You know, uh, what what, happened, what he did with Noah is different than what he did with Moses, is different than what he did with Daniel, is different with what he did with Solomon, is different what he did with David, is different what he did with Esther, right? Each one of them had a custom designed destiny I hope this video has helped you to see the 10 plus amazing benefits. And there's even way more than just the 10, but I wanted to pick 10 of what I really felt like would be really good, solid benefits that would help you to understand why a journal is so powerful, is so amazing, is so meaningful, is so effective at making you come alive and, and making this, this Christian you know, walk in this communion with God way more effective than just a weekly sitting, listening to, and getting your little sample sermon. So I hope this video has helped you. Until the next video, make sure that you hit that bell icon and subscribe so that you don't miss these videos because these videos are meant to help you with what I believe is the most important lesson that any person could ever learn. It's actually solving one of the biggest problems in the, in the earth today, which is a lack of intimacy with the living God, which is the, the reason why Jesus died on the cross is basically to restore intimacy. And so these series of videos are to help you in really what is the most important thing that anyone should ever learn, which is how to connect with the living God. So until the next video, God bless you.